as Hitler's army stormed through Europe, Britain faced invasion by hordes of German tanks. In a top secret location, engineers and scientists experiment with new types of tank killing grenades. Time to meet one of the most quirky and dangerous family members of this weaponology tree the Mark 74 Sticky Bomb. As Great Britain looked for ways to counter the threat of Nazi tanks, engineers of the MD1 research group create a bomb that used glue to stick to enemy armor. Sticky Bomb was one of those extraordinary weapons developed in the early part of the, uh, the Second World War. You broke it out of its container and you threw it up against a tank and it stuck. But theory didn't always translate into practice. It needed a brave infantryman to run up to a tank. And the bomb covered in high strength glue was a recipe for disaster. It was a very hazardous weapon because there was a timer on it. When you pulled the pin, you had a certain amount of time before it exploded. The real hazard was you pulled the metal case off, you pulled the pin, you kind of moved back to throw it. What do you do? It stuck to you. The main disadvantage of using a sticky bomb was you had to get within bomb throwing distance of the thing. You had to be real close. If you have infantry support with the tank, the infantry is going to pro provide defense against someone throwing a sticky bomb up against the thing. The sticky bomb is a clever idea. It's just not very friendly to the poor guy who's got to use it. The Germans came up with a stick-on tank destroyer of their own called the Hoft Holodung. Like its British counterpart, the problem was getting close enough to the enemy tank to apply the magnetic charge. But it had the edge in terms of technology. It used a principle called hollow or shaped charge and exploited a scientific phenomenon known as the Monroe Effect. In the late 19th century, it was American Charles Monroe who first noticed how the power of explosive could be greatly enhanced. While working at the Rhode Island Navy torpedo plant, he made an interesting observation. He found that, on detonation, any concave cavity or lettering on a block of explosive gun cotton caused a marked depression in the metal. Monroe noticed that lettering on the gun cotton block was burnt into the target. Today, the Monroe effect can be demonstrated using sheet explosive engraved with lettering rather than gun cotton. A sheet of brass is placed directly against the explosive. So I place the detonator on one corner and then I'll retire a safe distance and press the button. And then we look for the brass plate, which shouldn't go too far, and we see what's happened. This is precisely in Monroe effect. Here we have it. Look at that. Whoa! What do I read? read? Weaponology. You saw it here first. You can see very clearly where there was a groove, that is where there's writing and these two circular grooves there, the effect on the metal was greatly intensified. The conclusion from Monroe's discovery was clear. If you need to burn holes in steel or armor, a cavity in the charge can increase its power. It focuses the chemical energy of the blast inwards. But it was a German called Egan Neumann who took the technology even further. Neumann was probably the first person to recognize the applicability of that phenomenon to cause damage to a metal target. He explored the shape of the cavity to maximize that effect. By the middle of the Second World War, the combination of the Monroe effect and the work of Egan Neumann would lead to the development of some of the deadliest tank-killing weapons ever. Three, two, one! 